Okay. This is Bluzik Station version 8. I'm William. And I'm going to talk uh, about several options of Bluzik Station. Um, the main option is the sample player, which is the one you usually use more. And then the wave sequencer. The sample player. Well, there's a lot of options on the sample player. Uh, first of all, there, there are a lot of options that are hidden here. You just click with the right button, right click, and you're going to see some uh, um, options that are hidden. They are not here on the interface, and also not on the modulation matrix. Um, another thing you have to notice is that the sample player, you can load more than one sound to different layers. So let's say I want to add a new layer here. I'm going to pop up my option to select. Now I have two layers. Two layers here. They should play together. So they are playing together. But here on the waveform, if you select fixed waveform, it's going to play just one waveform, one layer, depending on the wave selector. So it's a very handy option. And you can use an LFO select that. Let's see here on the, I'm on the modulation matrix. And I'm going to add an LFO. To the sample player wave selector. Now it's working. Let's check my LFO. I have to add here. Let's try the fading stand. Be working. Oh, the left was too fast. Okay, I forgot to lower. Much slower. It's pretty much fading from one way form to another. Let's see. If the fix it now works with this lower. Hmm. I don't remember the difference of the code from the fixer, the fade one, but it should be working. Maybe it's just trigger the second one when it reaches the maximum value of the yeah of the LFO. So I have to do other type of LFO here. Let me try this square. A bit faster. Wouldn't be the same as negative at all. Here it's positive on output. Right. Yeah, now it's working. The LFO has an option here. You just click on the LFO number to select another LFO if you have, and the options positive only output. Because some modulation destinations can take negative and positive values, and some can't. And uh, in this case, the waveform is just from 0 to 1. So the negative value complicates a thing, a bit things out. So you have to select on the modulation on the output. Okay, let me see. Let's go back to the sampler. And the, the mochi is just uh, it's going to add all the layers one by one and another uh, as you select the, the wave here. As you turn up to one, it's going to add 
the 1, the 2, the 1 and 2 and 3, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and so on. So let's say, let's put more layers here. Put four layers. I will have to select another type of waveform. Let's select the triangle. Let's select all the waveforms. Just the last one is hard to hear. The last one has a decay. Let me replace this one. Load file. I'm going to replace that one. That should do. The triangle waveform is not reaching the cinture. Anyway, it's a nice little feature uh, used mostly with the fade option because you can fade from one waveform to another. Uh, let's say instead of LA4, we're going to use remove this one. And let's say you're going to use uh, the mod, uh, modulation wheel on the keyboard. I'm going to use mod CC1 and then send sample player with wave. And this is already set one. This is the modulation wheel. Let's see. I'm using fade, sorry. I have to lower here. Remote. You can you can hear now and see here here at the, at the bottom you can see my mouse up and down. That's the modulation wheel. I'm fading from one wait from another one and uh, let me check here if there's an option yes there's an option to smooth the, the values from the modulation wheel it's best to use because otherwise you're going to have uh, click sounds when you move very fast in the modulation wheel It's a nice little feature, and when you save this preset, it's going to save all the information of the layers you have selected, because layers are saved with the, uh, the preset. This is different from creating a sound. Um, let's say you have an, uh, a bunch of wave files, and you add here, but not of. Uh, let's say, show something. No. One here again. There's just one layer. I'm going to open the JIT zones, and as you open the JIT zones, you can see there is a there's a message here. Um, any change made in the following window will not be saved on the preset. Preset. You need to export the change into a new Vuzik for sound file and load this file instead, or you can use an external notepad. The editor and create an SFZ file instead, which is easier to, to handle. But you can also do this inside here. So I have closed it. And so now I own the zone editor. So I'm editing the first layer and you have just one zone, just, just this file here. 
And uh, this file I can select, let's say here, I can select the root node, the key low and the key high, and stuff like that. Key high here, 72. And let's load another zone, new zone. I'm going to add a triangle sound and I'm going to do the key low 73. So now when you click here, you have the two, two zones for this, this sound, this layer. But you have to remember to, to save this, to export this into something else and then load again. Otherwise, it's not going to be saved with the preset or your music project. And let's see here. You can see, here's the first zone, the second. Just to make it easier, let's see. Um, one thing to notice is that there's no uh, options here to edit. Uh, some people ask, oh, why I can edit a loop set in loop pen? You have to do this on an external program. Uh, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, Audacity does that. And it's free. So you can just edit your files there for the loop, loop areas because it's much easier to do in a dedicated program. And let's say here I'm going to export my, my file. So it creates a Vosk for sound file that we can then load later. And I can close the edit zones. And the only thing you can do on the layer, now I'm on the layer area. Let me slow the, uh, let me see here. So I load on the layer one, replace it. What you can do that, that is saved with the preset is select areas for the sounds for each layer. Now I'm not talking about the zones, I'm talking the layers because when you load the sample player you have you have the layers and it's, it's inside each layer you have the zones. It's a bit confusing for some people, but also understand it's very easy to use. So let's say I have a, let me do another layer. Go ahead and sound. Mm, I have to load sound on another layer. Okay. Or inch layer. So now I can select the first layer and select key high. Let's say 71, here 2, kilo 72. Some reason I lost my configuration here. Could be a problem with the sample player, but I'm going to fix that after this video. Should we play the other song instead? No, let's play this one. Anyway, that's what's supposed to do. I will have to fix that once. Uh, you have other options to select the volume for each layer. So if for any instance you have two sounds that you want to use together, but you want, don't want to edit and create another sound, you can just select the volumes here. You also can change how the waveform is going to play, for, reverse, or ping pong. You can also enable force loop. Let's say you load a zero shot file, like a drum sound. But you want it to loop it, you just select force loop, it's going to force loop from the start to the end. And you can also do the same thing. You have a sound that's looped, but you don't want it looped. Oh, okay, I see what I did wrong. Sorry, I apologize. This is a velocity, <laughs> not key. Okay, 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 let me do again. Sorry for that. My eyes today are a bit tired, so 
it's key low, let's go to later one, key low and key high 7 to 1. Uh, so many things on this program, and key high 7 to 2, now it's going to work. There we go. Uh, I was thinking that I made some kind of mistake. <laughs> It's okay, it's working. So, okay, let, let's try layer one. I'm going to do a force one shot. I think I'm right. Yeah, that's, that's right. Let's see if I did everything right here. No, I didn't do it right again. Kilo 72. And key highs 172. My eyes today are killing me. And later two are going to also force one shot. So you can see, even if the sound is looped, you can force it to get one shot. And it's not going to change the sound because these options here are, are uh, what you call non-destructive. Because they are not going to change the original sound. They are going to just be saved on the preset or the music project. And you have, don't have to worry about anything else. So this is just a bit of how, what you can do here with the sample player without having to add out several layers. If you want one layer to have multiple sounds, but uh, to use the same envelope, the same filter, you can do this here. You can even use the transpose to create a uh, multi sound. So I'm going to put back on the, the same layer here. So the both sounds are going to play together. So that's very neat. <laughs> Let's add another layer. New layer. You just you can just click here on open menu or just click on anywhere and, and select new layers. It's going to do the same thing. And you can see here that's the next sound, previous sound, and next to new layer. So just a quick shortcut to continually testing the sounds for that layer. Or just use here on the right the same. Well, let's try another layer next to new layer. So now we have four layers. I'm going to transpose five. Okay, this sounds probably shorter, so. Another one. And let's go back to layer one and disable first one shot. Layer two, disable one shot. Very simple patch using the sample player, four layers. I adjust the the transpose from layer two. You can see here layer two transpose seven, a layer four transpose zero. Let us select five. Let's try again five. Oh yes, yeah, so I changed the sound. So, okay. Mm, what else could you talk about the sample player? Well, you have the dual oscillator. Um, so, you have the, the oscillator for the sample player, and you can have another one. It's like playing two notes at the same time. 
so but it doesn't use uh, the polyphony let's say here the 16 voice is not going to use uh, double the voices it's going to play two oscillator internally so it should have 16 voice which is nice much trouble Uh, let's play around with the arpeggiator. So I'm going to the to MIDI option. I'm going to select. Uh, let's select just a four arpeggiator. Oh, ah, that sucks. I was having fun with that one. Anyway, I don't know what I did, what I did wrong. Decide to replace my filter. But that happens. I was pressing a little too hard, I don't know. Anyway, I found what wrong I'm going to take a look into that uh, I'm going to check on the forums what else people are asking about the, the tutorial and I'm going to present another video soon and um, <laughs> with, <laughs> yeah it sucks <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sorry for that. I was just playing around. Um, anyway, let me check something here. <laughs> yeah, it does happen. <laughs> but I don't know, it should happen. It's, it's the first time for me that happens. But uh, usually I don't play around with the interface. Usually I just use my keyboard around but for the sake of the video I'm doing that <laughs> okay where's my mouse at that should teach me how not to do anything live <laughs> my first live video you know <laughs> okay let's let's get back um uh, talking about the sample player okay 
Let me go back there. Uh, the Granular. Oh yeah, I forgot the Granular synth. Let me see if I have some something nice to load here for the Granular synth. Because this is one heck of an option. I think I should on the showcase have something. Oh yes, here Granular Morphe on the showcase in presets. Those are the presets that uh, are installed when you install the plugin. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. The sample and hold there. Oh, the sample. Oh, the sample and hold on the filter. Well, it samples and holds the the audio. Let me just uh, show quickly what it does. So let me add a sample player, and I'm going to add uh, another load. The, the very easy way to explain a sample and hold is like uh, it changes the frequency, uh, not the frequency, the sample rate of the waveform. So if we're playing, right now we're playing I think at 44 and 100, I think that's my, that my sound card is playing that. Let me check my devices here. Yes, for, this is the sample rate that uh, it's playing right now. So this is it. 44,000 and 100. So if I start moving this knob, it's going to divide that number until it reaches zero or near zero. Near zero. Let me check, I don't remember. Or near zero. Because zero will, will be a flat line. You wouldn't be wearing sound. So this, this is like a 10 hertz sample, sample rate and then start increasing. This is a feature that old video games use it, like uh, the Atari does that. Uh, yes, down samples. <laughs> Thanks, that's correct. Uh, exactly that. Sometimes the English um, slips, you know, like. <laughs> English is not my native language, so sometimes I get lost. But I speak pretty okay. Um, well, so if anyone has any question. Let me show. Ah, let's talk about granular sounds for now at least. Granular morphing. Let me see if I have here. Oh, I have two layers here. I'm using the two grains and um, oh, and a modulation matrix. There's a sample wave LFO and a modulation sequence for the sample grain position. Okay. A lot of people asking me, oh, I loaded a waveform. Let me, let me clear here this and I want to show what they are talking about. So, let me show the robotic vertex. Let me let this layer. So, this is a sound. That's a very complex sound. So, this is a sample sound. Uh, and what happens when you you select two one or two uh, grains. This is going to start the grain generator, and you don't hear anything. And people say, "Oh, what do I have to do?" Okay, that's where things start to get tricky. You have to use a modulation. Let's say I'm going to use the LFO one, and I'm going to modulate the sample player grain position. Oh, because this is important. So I'm going to use LFO to grow grain position, and it's a very slow LFO as you can see here. So what happens now? The sound is chopped, so the grain size is going to be, you can see here, number of granular grains per cycle, 
the octave and ton is the size of the grains. So let me check another thing here first. Okay, here. Let me play a very low note. Now, what is happening is the LFO is just changing the grain position. So it's going from the start to the end of the waveform and changing the position of that little grain. Actually, two grains. They are cross-fading from one another. We can change the shape here from zero to no, to no fade from one another. It's to a fade, complete fade from one another. And the higher the note, the smaller is the grain size. And the lower the note, the, the higher so is like this. Lower note, very large grain size. And as, as you play a higher note, it's going to play a very narrow grain size. Hard disk spin down. What's that? Let me try another waveform because this one is not very good. See, I used to have. Um, let me see on the on the original station. No, on the music station eight sound sets. Think on test sounds. Let me check here. Oh, here phonetics. This is one. This, this is a good one because let's see with, without the grain at all. Just as normal sample playing. Let me remove the effects so you can hear better. Just a normal sample, okay? Now, when I turn the grains, it's going to do something different. Okay, what happens now is that you can see it's double, almost like time stretching. Because what happens is the sound stays on the same pitch, but uh, the size of the grains is changed. I'm going to play a low note and a high note. But then you have a speed option. The speed. The only, the only problem with the granular sounds is that the they usually end up sounding a bit uh, choppy. Um, it's it's hard to get a, a perfect sound. Let's have just one. One grain. Now, watch what happens when I speed up the LFO. Slow down. Now, it's, now let's play down the speed. So you always always have to remember to use this some some sort of uh, modulation to the sampler sampler grain position. Otherwise, it's not going to make any sound. It's just going to get stuck. Just how this sample player works. Um, and you can also use dual oscillators here. It's very neat, actually. Now 
add, let's add some delay and really go crazy. That's <laughs> you can do a lot <laughs> some serious damage to the sound here. And um let's let's try another thing here. I'm going to add another modulation. Let's add another LFO here. So I have to first add another LFO. Now I have two LFOs. And I'm going to add a LFO two the filter. You have just one filter, otherwise it's going to show filter one, filter two. And soap and hold. Now that's going to be crazy. And again, I have to select the LFO2 options positive only value. Otherwise, the sample hold only has 0 and 1. So we have to select the option. The same thing should be for LFO1. You can see that it's already selected because I loaded preset that had that option. So okay, let's go back to the full two position on the output and let's make it very slow. But I'm not want I don't want it to go too high, so I'm going to adjust my amount to point three, let's say. Let's try. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And you can also adjust the mix of the filter so I get to the original sound without the sample and hold effect. So okay, I think that's a very Nifty option. <laughs> um, what else could I talk about? Let me check here on the emails. Okay. Um, just a minute. Let me check something here on the other computer. But it's hard to see. I have another granular here, let me check which this one is doing. Let me check the modulation matrix. Oh, I'm using the modulation sequencer. Nice. This is a very nice option because with the modulation sequencer, you can create. Um, it's like having, well, it's a sequencer, <laughs> like those old analog sequencers, but you can use it as a modulation. So let me check. Uh, oh, it has a smooch option. Turn it in. Okay, it's sync it to the tempo. So it sends the modulation to the green position. I need.
okay. Now I see what's going on. And there's also the arpeggiator going on. That's why it's always getting a different sound. The arpeggiator is using, let me load the preset again, just in case. Oh yeah, that's it. We have the modulation sequencer and the arpeggiator. Let me turn off the arpeggiator, I should get some feedback. Yeah, that's it. Because what, what happens here is that there's no key syncing. It's just syncing to the tempo, but it's free syncing. It's always playing, the modulation sequence is always playing. So each new note that the arpeggiator generates is going to, to get to a different position. That's very... Very nice effect. I don't think my mix is working because I don't have another, I don't have a secondary filter. To play in parallel. Check if power processing fix that. I don't remember why I'm not getting the original sound. I have to check that, but it should be getting the original sound too. So I'm going to add another filter just in case. So I move filter. And now I have the parallel processing for the two filters. It's loud. <laughs> okay. My volume is not near loud. Okay, let me check. Which layer fading? Filter key track. Oh, filter key track is very simple. It's very simple. <laughs> Just use a bandpass filter, and you can see there's no modulation. So what happens is in the filter itself, I just click it in options that have frequency key fall. So the frequency is going to follow the the keys. It should be uh, tuned. So if I play very high frequency here with a very high resonance. Overflow the filter. <laughs> Almost like a, a Nintendo sound from the original NES. The NES, NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. I don't know how to say that. NES. The filter overflow. There's a there's one filter that has overflow protection. Is the the the, the Moog 24 low pass. That one can go very crazy with it. But it's not so loud. Um, let me check. One thing, we, uh, uh, we don't talk much about it. Let me know what you want. I need to preset here again. With the, let's say the draw wave oscillator. That's a good one. Um, let me check here. Uh, 
Uh, I slide down on, on, the, on this chair. I start up all height and then start sliding down the chair. Jeez. Okay, uh, let's talk about a custom filter. This is a crazy one for those who really like to experiment. Because you can create your own filter. This is a bit quicker filter. Let's try um, basic low pass, basic high pass. Okay, what's up with this filter? Well, what happens here? Let me open up my my stuff here. It's all my programs. Nothing to hide here, so don't worry. What happens here? Let's go to my folder of the music station data files. Um, extras, custom filters. So they are here. The custom filter is like a small scripting language that I created. It's very basic, so it's very hard to use too, but if you know what you're doing, you can create your own filter here. So you have the parameters here, the setup to create all the variables, and the process, process of, of how it works. The instructions should be here on the default file. Oh, and here they are. So if you are like a crazy mad scientist and wants to do some DSP, Digital signal processing. You can create your own, your own custom filter using this file. So it's very easy actually to do. But it's, it does consume more CPU usage compared to just plain code. But it's, it's, it's nice, a nice little feature if you want to play around. You can see here the Beach Crusher, how I did it. So I'm not going to explain this further unless someone asks me to, then I can go very detailed and explain this. Otherwise, you just take a look at the default file. The default file explains everything you have to do. And um, it should play rather fast. Okay, enough of that for now. So... What else could I say about Vuzik Station? Well, on this version 8, what changes is that Vuzik Station version 8 is actually a new product. When I started to work on it, I told people, well, I'm going to make a new program from the ground, reusing some of the code from the Vuzik 8000. And that's why Vuzik Station version 8 doesn't have all the features that Vuzik Station 7 has because um, some features I, I couldn't port it or didn't make sense to port it but um, I would say that um, more than 90% of the features are here I even added later the legacy filter of the Vuzik Station version 7 because initially it just had a the new filters from Vuzik 8000. Um, just check on my dog. <laughs> Let me get some water. Um, and um, the main difference is that you have multiple layers now. For instance, Vuzik version 7 on only had four layers of regular oscillator for loading samples and two layers for wave sequencing. And uh, the wave sequencing had just one mode. The version 8, the wave, sequ wave sequencing had two modes. We also have the arpeggiator, that's new. The modulation matrix is a, a bit better with uh, some refined options 
Music Station version 8 is cross-platform. If someday I find the need to make a Linux version, I could make it. But for now, uh, I don't have much time because I, I had a lot of things happen this year. And just now, I'm getting back on my feet, so uh, I don't really have time to check on the Linux version. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the drawable oscillator because I really like this one. Uh, first of all, I have selected here the initial drawable oscillator preset. I have enabled my high quality mode. And it's locked right now, so I have to unlock it to edit it. So it's very, very, very easy to use. You just unlock it and start drawing. And you can select some options from the menu. Like uh, smooth the, the waveform to remove sharp uh, edges. And import or export files. And you also have the waveform browser. Because, yeah, you can load different waveforms here. And you can have from 1 to 20 waveforms. And this is kind of neat because you, you can actually crossfade from one waveform to another doing some kind of pseudo uh, wave sequencing. But this is not a wave sequencer. Okay, wave sequencer can do very complex things. This is something else. So let me open my waveform browser. And I'm going to check if I have installed. I should have installed the collection of sounds. Maybe they are not here or they are music station, maybe. I don't know whether store it. It's a very large collection of waveforms. Oh, okay, I remember where I store it. Remind me here. Music 4000 data, sound sets. Adventure Kid waveforms. That's the one. Let me show the first folder. Now I can do the next and previous waveform here. Put a repeater here so I can hear what I'm doing. Yeah, too fast. Now let me select away from slot number two. I'm going to load another one here. From two. Now I'm going to go to from three. I have selected here so I can hear what's going on because I have the fixed morph. Okay, so I have so I have two three waveforms now. One two and three. I'm going to select waveform one and going to select fade morphing. So it's going to morph do a fade from one waveform to another and let me turn off my arpeggiator and I'm, add, I'm going to add the LFO to the draw wave oscillator wave selector and I'm going to make sure it's positive only output here on my LFO and make it a bit slower so I can hear what's happening. Okay, let's see what's going on here now because some like the RPG didn't turn off. Okay, I know what's going on, sorry. I have 20 waveforms and I'm going to select just 1 and 2 and 3. So I have to be careful when I play here on my uh, modulation matrix. So I have to find the value 
of the just the trio of, of the waveforms. output. Uh, I'm doing something wrong. I don't remember because I have a showcasing here. The sequence is going to be fading. There's, there's something I'm missing here. I don't know what. Okay, a sign of waveform is going to. Yeah, that's pretty much right. Too fast, you know. Like it's retreating. I force a little wave. That's pretty much right. I'm probably doing something wrong because it's been a while since I have done this. I'm going to check later to see if maybe there is a problem that I'm overseeing. I'm going to do it from scratch, but. Let me try here, do oscillators. And we got the same sound. What I think I have here is sequence mode 2. The Slayer Mode Sequencer. Now that's a wave sequencer. I remember doing this one time. Mm, not going to find it now, but that's pretty much it. That's what I can do with it. At least. I don't know what else I could talk about right now. Uh, let me play around. That's this refrigerator home round robin. Eleven layers. Oh, okay. That's pretty neat. Sound here. So we have a refrigerator here selected. Make it a bit slow so we can hear better what's happening. And I have 11 layers here on my sample player. So different sounds here. And what's happening here on the sample player, you right click it options, round layer to note layer. So each new note is going to select a different layer on the next uh, round robin style way. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 11 and 1 again. So you hear this. One way of doing, you know, wave sequencing, but uh, it's also another way to add. Uh, let's say you have four sounds that you you, have, you want these four sounds the same key, like it's a um, I don't know a snare sound, but you want to play a different sound every time you press the key. So you can do that. You can load several layers of the sound of the snare sounds, so let's say you load the four layers of the snare sounds and you go here on the sample player and select round robin note layer and every time you play a note 
is going to play the next layer. So it's just a neat feature to have. Can, it's more useful with drum sounds, to be honest. But this is just an example of using with synthesis. Because what happened here is that the arpeggiator is generating new notes, and I have several layers here loaded. Let me check this other preset here. for now I think um, I'm going to take a short break and I'm going to be back in a around 10 minutes so I'll see you guys again